to kind of look at is the wave system. And this is just a kind of a placeholder ocean. This is something that uses a wave spectrum and a Perlin noise. Something you can download for free if you want to play around with it in Unity. It's pretty neat. There's a limitation to it that it can only render the waves at a certain height. It can't go any higher or any longer. It renders them uh, smaller than the spectrum wants to. So the response of the spectrum doesn't actually respond to the actual height here. So sometimes you can get a little bit uh, out of whack with it. But anyway, we wanted to use just something to get it uh, working. So you can see that we've got these different meshes and the, the waves are actually rendering as a mesh that we can, re that we can work with and use that to pull the information we need, such as the wave height and uh, where the waves are moving. So what we've got here is different levels of vessels. Each one is a little bit different. The first one here is actually just the buoyancy mesh. And what we use the buoyancy mesh for is to determine the volume of the vessel at its most water tight. So if you look at the St. Albans models that we've got here, with the doors all closed, that gives us this generic shape of the buoyant object. And really, we don't need these upper deck areas. This just happened to be uh, part of the model when it was done. What we really needed was this, just this base portion. But when we did this, we wrote, we wrote a script that then determines the volume of this object. So this object right here has a volume of 2365. And so then, when this object is then used for the buoyancy calculation of the vessel, as you can see over here, it's actually part of this vessel, then we know that this vessel has a buoyant volume of 2365. This volume is then split up into eight separate pieces. And when we look at this, we'll see that there are actually these little tiny gizmos here that each one uses the volume of that block and determines how much to, to push back against gravity. So we're not actually floating on this object. What we are doing is we're determining how deep into the ocean each one of these little objects is, then saying that for every inch of immersion that we go down, we create a reactive force against gravity going back up in the y direction. So that gives us pretty much a buoyancy to work with. So we're figuring out how much water we're displacing and then applying that directional force back against the hull. So that gives us a, a buoyancy, essentially. The other thing we can apply is we can figure out where the center of the mass is. This is where this little object here, this gizmo in the center, kind of comes in. That's the what we're calling the center of mass point. This doesn't take into center of buoyancy yet. That's going to be one of our later builds. Right now, it's just strictly the center of gravity. So the center of gravity applies to this point. If you move that point up or down, then of course the reaction of the vessel to the waves is going to be completely different, which I'm gonna show you throughout these vessels over here. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can change the mass of them. This Albans over here is about a million uh, units of weight. This Albans over here is 1.5 million. And you can immediately see that when I started the game up, it sank it down until eventually these objects reached a, um, a neutral point. Now you'll see that you can, you can actually see the upper gizmos on this one. They're actually giving some buoyancy, which means it's starting to get past these lower portions where these end, it then starts to calculate the depth for these upper ones. And it'll do this based on the height of the object. So it splits it into uh, smart grids of objects to calculate the buoyancy from. So we've got the object here, we've got these buoyancy points, and then each one of these vessels as we go down the row, we've actually moved up the center of gravity each time. So we get higher and higher and then higher. And as you can see here, this one has much higher height of center of gravity than the water line is going to be, which means it's a very unstable position. Normally the boat would then uh, capsize over until it reached a neutral point this is when you see vessels that are uh, essentially listing to one side or the other. That's what's happened is the uh, center of gravity is too high. Even though the center of gravity is centered, you know, it's directly in the middle of the vessel, it just ends up reaching a point that it rolls to one side or the other until that displacement finds a buoyant neutral ground. And we're going to see that in a second here. So we're going to watch all these vessels moving around independently. And from right to left, you'll see that the right one with the lowest center of gravity is going to have the shortest roll period. 
And that means that the, it's going to roll the quickest from side to side, but it's also going to roll the least. And as we move through each one down the row, the further we get down, the longer it will roll side to side and the longer it will take. So it won't be as fast and it will take longer to go side to side. And that's what they call the roll period of the vessel. And that's just a buoyancy uh, term that means that the vessel rolls side to side, taking what's called a roll period. It could be three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Um, and you're looking for kind of a medium ground. You don't want a really short roll period or and you don't want a really long one. The longer the roll period gets, that usually means the riding arm isn't strong enough to bring the vessel back up again. And we're going to see that on this left side here, these two vessels on the left are actually not going to return to fully upright all the time. The, the fourth one over will once in a while, but the fifth one generally will not. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look. All right, so here we are. And you can see that this right one, it barely rocks and rolls and it barely pitches. The next two rock much further and much longer. And they also pitch further and longer as well because, again, that center of gravity. And then these ones over here, they don't rock and roll worth a damn. And that's because what they've done is reached a neutral point where this center of gravity has gotten much closer to the buoyancy point of the vessel. So this one here, it only healed a little bit until the center of gravity reached the buoyancy point. Whereas this one over here had to heal much further until eventually it reached a buoyancy point that was neutral. The only reason it did not capsize is because, again, we're using the maximum buoyancy of the vessel with the doors open. Had we used a model that did not take into account the doors being closed, it more than likely would have almost immediately capsized and that would have been it. it would have, its, its buoyant neutral point would have been upside down. So you can see the models moving around. Um, they're responding to the waves. And they're actually a little bit uh, faster than we want them to be. We want to put a dampening motion on them, but right now we're just trying to get the motion and rolling and rocking to work. So you can see over here that with our one and a half million unit vessel, with it sinking much further down, it also rolls and pitches a whole lot less just because of the mass and the distance at which it's down there. So you can see that we've got a pretty good base of the, the way that buoyancy is going to be working. We've got quite a few little sections to add, but we're getting along there pretty quickly. And hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have a little more done on this to make it a little more stable. And we're going to start working on the new ocean system. So if you guys remember, go to heartsofoakgame.com for more information and piratesahoy.net to volunteer. Thanks. <laughs>